to Barbados, the guiding principle must be the best possible patient care. We will not compromise on this, for it is the main reason for our existence. I think staff at all levels in all departments are being asked to, to pull their weight. And I will ensure, as Minister, that there is continued equity and fair play at all levels. But I want to just remind you of a few of the achievements that we made at the QBH in the last um, two years or so. But sometimes it's very important that I remind members of our own political family and the wider community of what's been happening and ensure that your daughter is well spent. At the QEH, we are currently working in the last phase of a major electrical upgrade. The truth of the matter is that that institution has been challenged for many years in terms of the quality of electrical and, and consistency of electrical supply there. When we came into office, we committed to spend $12 million in electrical upgrade at the QEH, and I can assure you it is successfully being undertaken. <laughs> we found a situation where you have an institution and a facility with almost 2,000 employees and no cafeteria for the staff and patients to use and relatives to use. That, to my mind, was totally unacceptable. A few weeks ago, we proudly reopened the QEH cafeteria at the cost of $1.7 million. <laughs> and I can tell you, you know, my salary can't stretch too far. And the prices over there in the cafeteria are well within my reach. So every now and then I go over there to have a light, and I get my lunch for $5. I think it is well worth it. <laughs> Many of you over the years would have been complaining about the quality of beds that your loved ones had to use in the QEH. And I'm happy to report to you that within the last year, we have purchased and installed 200 new beds at a cost of $750,000. Now we also have from time to time, far too often, a situation where uh, elective surgeries are being cancelled, where the recovery rooms are fully occupied and that posed a threat um, to the health of many individuals. And I'm proud to say to you that a few months ago, we opened an 8 bed high dependency unit at a cost of $800,000. And as you drive along Martindale's Road today, you can look across at the QEH and see that we've embarked upon a window replacement program, and today we spent about $300,000 on that. And, not to be neglected, only last week, the bathroom facilities at the QEH were reopened, some of them that were upgraded, at a cost of that period of $80,000. We recently acquired, and should be here shortly, a new laparoscopic suite at a cost of about $250,000. And this is meant to uh, certainly reduce the length of stay between the QEH in many departments, including our sectors, so that we can certainly improve an efficiency there and have a more rapid turnover uh, of successful intervention. In 2004, the former government acquired two boilers that sat in the room, at the, in the appropriate room in the QEH for almost five years with nothing being done about it. Your government was able to spend $155,000 in electrical plumbing upgrade and today the QEH has two brand new boilers fully operated. <laughs> We've also acquired additional equipment for the surgical department, the laboratory department, and several other departments in the QEH. We have not yet finished. We've come a long way in the last two years, but there's much more left to be done. Many of you who today have to visit the accident emergency department which has been long been the main source of concern in QEH, can see the effects of a wise decision to add four more doctors, six nurses, and six patient advocates, hence reducing the waiting time in AD. 